The multi-benoli random finite set is central to several of the state-of-the-art multi-object tracking algorithms. Since we have now introduced both the convolution formula and Bernoulli random finite sets, it is easy to explain what a multi-Bernoulli random finite set is. Suppose x1 to xn are independent Bernoulli random finite sets with multi-object PDFs px1 to px_n. Then, if we set x to be the union of the sets x1 to xn, it becomes a multi-Bernoulli random finite set. Also, since x is the union of independent random finite sets, we can use the convolution formula to express its multi-object PDF. Specifically, to express the multi-object PDF of x, we take the sum over all disjoint sets x1 to xn, whose union is x, of the product over the corresponding multi-object PDFs. multi benoli random finite sets are often used to model multiple potential objects. That is, whereas a Bernoulli random finite set can be used to model the special case when we have one potential object, a multi benoli random finite set is useful in the more common situation when there may be multiple objects present. Another possible usage of multi benoli random finite sets is to model appearing objects that is, the set of new objects that appear during the prediction step. For notation, we assume that the multi-object PDF of the ith Bernoulli random finite set is parameterized using Ri and Pi. To visualize a multi-Bernoulli random finite set and gain some intuition for what it represents, suppose the multi-Bernoulli contains three Bernoulli components whose existing probabilities are 0 0.7, 0 0.9, and 0 0.1. We also assume that the three Bernoulli components have spatial PDFs as illustrated in the figure. You can then imagine that X represents that there are three potential objects. Since R2 is 0 0.9, we are almost certain that there is an object around 2 comma minus 2. With 70% probability, there is another object around minus 2 comma 2. Finally, there is a 10% probability that there is an object around minus two comma minus two. Since the three potential objects are assumed independent of each other, we may have zero, one, two, or three objects present. Sampling a multi Bernoulli process is also very simple. You can again initialize the set as empty. We then loop over all the capital N Bernoulli components. For every component, we generate a uniformly distributed random number between zero and one, in MATLAB, this is simply denoted RAND. And we check if this number is smaller than RI. If RAND is smaller than RI, which happens with probability RI, we generate the vector XI from the spatial PDF PI and include XI in the set. Let us look at samples from the multi Bernoulli process with two Bernoulli components, both with parameter R equals 0 0.8 and with the spatial PDF of the first Bernoulli random finite set, it's a Gaussian density with mean 2,2 and covariance matrix 0 0.3 times the identity matrix. And the spatial PDF of the second Bernoulli random finite set is the same, except that the mean is instead minus 2, comma minus 2. Looking at the samples, we see that we often have two objects present, but sometimes one or even zero objects. The spatial PDFs of the elements are such that the vectors usually appear in or near the two circles. Note that the vectors are independent, but they are not identically distributed. And among the samples that we observe here, we never obtain two vectors in the same circle. The fact that the vectors are not identically distributed is an important difference compared to the Poisson point process. In spite of this, I understand if you find the multi Bernoulli processes similar to the Poisson point process. And you might ask yourself what the differences are and how they are related. It turns out that the processes are very similar under certain assumptions. Specifically, a Bernoulli random finite set whose existence probability R is less than 0.1 can be approximated very accurately using a Poisson point process. A consequence of this is that a multi Bernoulli process in which all the parameters R1 to Rn are less than 0.1 can also be accurately approximated as a Poisson point process, since the union of several Poisson point processes is another Poisson point process. It also holds that any Poisson point process can be approximated using a multi Bernoulli process.
but it may require many components, capital M. Based on these observations, the two processes really do seem very similar. Further, when we can use a Poisson point process to model our uncertainties, it tends to yield more computationally efficient solutions due to some of its properties. Based on these observations, it may be tempting to use Poisson point processes as often as possible. So why do we care about multi Bernoulli processes when Poisson point processes have these advantages? Well, as you know, the cardinality of a Poisson point process is Poisson distributed, which means that both the mean and the variance of the cardinality is equal to the Poisson rate. This is problematic in certain cases. Imagine that you want to approximate your posterior distribution using a Poisson point process, and that you know that precisely 10 objects are present. If you then set the mean of the cardinality to 10, you are forced to also set the variance of the cardinality to 10, even though you know that the number of objects is 10. In situations like these, the multi Bernoulli process may be more suitable since it can easily set the existence probability to 1 for 10 different objects and thereby represent certainty in the number of objects. Another potential advantage with multi Bernoulli processes is what we mentioned on the previous slide, namely that the elements in a multi Bernoulli process are independent, but they do not have to be identically distributed. As an example, you can imagine that your measurements have told you that there is one object in the left lane and one object in the right lane. Using a multi Bernoulli process, we can easily represent this information by having one Bernoulli component for each lane. Unfortunately, the same information cannot be represented in detail using a Poisson point process. To start with, setting the Poisson rate to 2 does not mean that we know that there are two objects and there could still be, for instance, one or three cars. However, even if we pretend that the Poisson point process could tell us that there were precisely two objects, we would still have another problem. To describe the spatial distribution, we would use a normalized version of the intensity function, which would cover both lanes. Since the objects are independent and identically distributed, the first object could be in either of the two lanes, and so could the second object. As a consequence, according to the Poisson point process, we could therefore have one object in each lane, two objects in the left lane, or two objects in the right lane, simply because the Poisson point process is not able to represent the information that we had access to. To summarize, both multi Bernoulli processes and Poisson point processes are useful. Roughly speaking, Poisson point processes are useful when we have imprecise information, since they generally enable us to express the information on a compact form that yields efficient algorithms. The multi Bernoulli process is instead better at describing precise information regarding how many objects or measurements that we have, as well as distributions when the elements are not identically distributed.